Hi all, I have a very entertaining, but at the same time somewhat unfair game to show you. This is Leela 11089 against Ethereal 10.88. And uh, funny enough, I was speaking to the Ethereal author not so long ago, a few days back, about chess openings and how uh, chess computers can play the openings. Um, Unfortunately, in this game, <laughs> Ethereal, the Ethereal chess engine is kind of handicapped with this opening. Uh, it's not that the Alakine defense is bad in itself. Uh, so this is the first uh, two moves. And the first three moves, that's fine. It's this move, knight to e4. This is extremely dubious, to say the least. Uh, the main line is knight d5. Knight g8 might actually be useful for the f5 square later without committing a major tactical liability of that knight hopping around. Uh, but this, yes, this is just weird. If you check wiki, uh, it indicates uh, knight d5 is almost universally played. So if you want to play the other kind of defense, knight d5. And uh, the other knight moves uh, are not particularly good. Uh, but knight g8 for the record, if you check wiki, it's called the Brooklyn defense apparently. Uh, not after Bobby Fisher, but in honour of the hometown of Grandmaster Joel Benjamin, a great US chess grandmaster, who calls it his pet line. Although um, black might be said to be given odds of free moves according to Wiki, white has only a small advantage according to theory. The first recorded use of the Brooklyn variation was in 1905 in Vienna, when Aaron, where Aaron Nimsovich with white checkmated Adolf Albin on the 34th move. But very dubious is uh, this move Knight E4 which John Watson and Eric Schiller dub the Mokel, is it like mocking? Mokel Mo Bemb I don't know how to pronounce that M-B-E-M-B-E -E. uh, ridiculous. So they analyse something like D4, F6 and with variations just favoring white basically off this. I guess f6 has the major idea of supporting knight g5 and maybe back to f7. Uh, however, yeah, this is pretty damaging as you might expect this particular position after bishop d3, d5 for example. Uh, I have some analysis of this which varies from theirs actually. I'll show you f3, knight g5. Bishop takes, f takes, f4. And they thought that white was clearly better here. Black's best move might be, in fact, to play g6 here. And now we have knight f3. And they've analyzed g takes and g4. Now, on g4, that's fine. It's absolutely clear white's better after knight g5. Because, for example, knight takes h7. This position is just horrendous for black. That nasty pin, the h4 opening up for the rook. It's horrendous. But, in fact, because of advances in technology... Uh, they might have mis-evaluated this position as being much better for white because after knight g5 here, not e6, there's a move here, bishop h6, which apparently is fine for black, according to Stockfish 9. This position, black might even have a small edge. So yeah, there exists one variation, apparently, if you follow it, yeah, it's you should basically you should check all the analysis. It is uh, this might not actually be totally winning for White. However, in this game, uh, Leela doesn't actually follow that path. Uh, she actually, uh, well, the game doesn't follow that path at all. There's no uh, f6. There's e6, which dis dissuades f3 here. So the queen's activated, and if f3, yeah, a little trap. I guess it's good for a trap, this opening. Queen h4 check. This this didn't happen. g3, knight takes g3, and then black wins the exchange. The queen's not trapped. This, for example, this is an example continuation. Black's absolutely doing great, in fact. So yeah, there's one trap, but Leela's not falling for that after e6 and place a quirky looking knight h3. But you get this knight h3 in variations the Nimza Indian was a similar kind of analogous check issue on e4 when there's a knight 
on h4 when there's a knight on e4. And this does the job here because now there's f3 with great effect threatened. Uh, so black plays h6 to give the knight g5. Uh, just to show d5 here, the effects of f3. Check g3. So the knight's interrupting that file. So there's, the rook's not lost. The knight actually can switch back to f2. Great position for white. So h6. Bishop, sorry, queen g4, another key move. The knight's you know, prevented from using uh, g5 here without losing a pawn. d5. Uh, here on f5, yeah, this, this cannot be good. Uh, but just for the record, uh, this, this cannot be good. Uh, this kind of thing, knight f4 for knight g6. And f3 here is a total disaster, of course, uh, for black. Yeah. Um, and if you're wondering about, for, for whatever reason, g5 here, then there's knight takes g5. Yeah, so these lines are just horrendous, as you'd expect. So d5, f3. So black is basically losing a pawn. And it's a pretty uphill struggle here, losing a pawn at this level. We have h5, queen f4, g5, some forcing moves from Ethereal. So yeah, it hasn't been given, to be fair, it hasn't been given the greatest opening in the world. And apparently Leela is scheduled <laughs> to play black in this ridiculous opening, which I expect, unfortunately, will be a horrendous loss as well for Leela. So I don't blame either of them. But anyway, let's see how Leela takes this position further. So winning a pawn here is not good news uh, for black. D takes e4 is no nice solace. It wasn't even played. C5 was played, probably more practical C5. If taking here, for example, the knight, uh, a knight coming to e4, there's no point taking on d4 because this whole d file backfires in this position. Uh, but let me show you. Knight takes, castling queen side. This is just a total backfire. White's got a big advantage. Uh, and on knight b4, it's the same thing. White's just castling. It doesn't matter about a2 even. It just doesn't matter. Big advantage to white. Uh, yeah, on queen d5, <laughs> there's knight f6 check. Uh, if you thought there was a, something with a2 there, I just caught my attention there. Uh, so anyway, so this is this is not a good idea. Why it's essentially going to be massively better. Just to recap, after bishop e3 here, casually taking on e4 soon. No point. So c5, bishop f4. And Leela has got the potential for castling queenside here. Knight c6. You might think cd. Let's check this out. Knight d2. This position is uh, also pretty horrendous for black here. This is just, uh, as an example, white's getting, of course, a massive advantage. Uh, so we have knight c6. D takes, capturing away from the center. That's a, a Leela favorite, sometimes winning a pawn. Uh, but this this is um, responded to here. We've actually check. Uh, so we have knight d2, bishop d7, a3. And I believe there's the possibility uh, sometimes of, of b4 coming up. Uh, but anyway, th th that... I mean, at the moment, it, there's a pin. Uh, it's more complicated. Uh, but that pawn snapped off. White castles queenside. And now knight d4 threatening a mate in one. So is this trouble for Leela? c3, isn't that weakening the light squares? Uh, on bishop d3, uh, this is okay for white too, actually, after bishop e3 pinning that knight. This position is quite nice for white. Good advantage. So uh, c3, and we have bishop a4. So it hasn't black visually got the c-file and a bit of pressure here. But this is where Leela comes into her own. Uh, now, actually, it, it, it's a very, very good position, actually, if it can be navigated to show the trump cards of white. Big if. 
but Leela can do it, as we know. If white plays rook e1, then rook c8, this position, uh, losing a rook there still doesn't even lose for white because there's like perpetual check stuff going on. It's it's just very dangerous. Um, after, for example, b uh, rook f8, bishop e3, it's Leela that can inflict a dreaded perpetual check scenario sometimes. So yeah, with the king in the center, black king in the center, it's quite dangerous. But anyway, no need for rook e1. No need for that. Uh, e takes d5, sacrificing the exchange. Brilliant. Bishop takes d1. Uh, there's no other real options here. Knight b3 check, just take that off and take on e6. Here, uh, this is just very good for white. On queen takes d5 instead, bishop c4, and then taking on d4. And then that king takes unpins, massive advantage for white here. So queen d3, massive advantage. e takes d5, bishop e3 pinning. This is just losing that other piece, massive advantage for white. So yeah, the exchange has to be accepted, basically in case you were wondering. But it's two pawns for the exchange, because the knight's now hanging unless black wants to lose another piece. So knight f5. Uh, yeah, taking, in fact, white can improve with bishop c4 before taking the knight and interfering with black's king castling. Massive advantage to white. So knight f5. D takes, and now bishop d3. And black castles, which essentially goes into a very bad end game transition. Uh, even though Ethereal has access to table bases, this is not a great one after the check from the bishop. Queen's coming off, and basically three pawns for the exchange. If you look, black's only got three pawns, white's got six. Three pawns for the exchange, and this is a real squish job from Lena now. Centralizing pieces, this is visually quite impressive. So the pieces get centralized. That shields the king to come into the center. So the king is making his way to the center sometimes. Now g4, which gives an outpost square, f5 for the knight potentially. King comes centrally. And toying around there, and then goes to f3. <laughs> okay. Now the knight's heading for f5. Uh, and we have knight d4. The knight's actually pivoting around g5 another dangerous pawn emerging okay a little trap there can't take the rook takes d4 it seems so rook d5 yeah making inroads as they say that's an expression making inroads uh within the opponent's position so this g6 now the pawns are getting heavier and heavier as issues for black to deal with so heavy in fact that black's getting completely squished now and it becomes actually kind of sadistic here because <laughs> you could have played e7 for rook d8 which which visual, visually is very aesthetically pleasing to me to play rook d8 here. <laughs> for example bishop g3 rook d8 yes even i can see this this is a way of winning this position <laughs> But the sadistic Leela plays rook d1. Rook d1. Oh, this is an amusing game. You've got, you got to hand it to uh, yeah the organisers for the opening. Knight e5. Bishop b6. Knight d7. And this is even another bit of amusement. There's knight f8. For king takes g8. <laughs> ah, ah, and that wasn't even played. Knight f8 is another. <laughs> Just matching the rook. Sorry, I can't help it. I can't help it. But no, e7, yeah, maybe the knight needs another protector to play knight f8. So we have b4. Ethereal starts blowing away some pawns. In... <laughs> so, uh, yep, another pawn blown away, trying to lose all its pawns. Maybe it's trying to head for a table-based draw, but it's probably unlikely here after knight f8. <laughs> so the rook is next. The rook takes... Bishop takes this. I know this is just really unfair. This is the impact of the opening. You see, you can be a fantastic player, but if you have a bad opening, it's a very, very important link in the chain. 
just as important as end games. All our links in the chain as chess players need to be really strong. We can't be let down by the opening. We can't be let down by our end games. Every part of our game really needs to be strong in chess. And Ethereal, you know, this is the only like losing game so far. Uh, although some others have been a bit dodgy. Uh, but yeah, this is not even Leela can fluff this up into a table based draw at this point. <laughs> oh dear, this is just one for amusement, I think, and laughter this game, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, and checkmates on the way. Checkmate. So Leela's going to get it in return, I predict. If she doesn't, then that will be strange, very strange, because this is, I regard, uh, the most losing opening of all games that Leela has played with and has to play with. I think it's a default loss in with with correct play to refute it, the knight e4. Anyway, a little bit of entertainment there. Don't play this variation of the Anakin defense unless you really want to head for this trap. That's the only thing going for it is the trap, but it really compromises your position. To play for e6 and queen h4 check to the unsuspecting opponent that plays f3 at the wrong time. Apart from that, this opening has virtually no value. So, okay, bullet chest traps, that may, maybe. Okay, comments, questions, likes, shares, appreciated. Thanks very much.